Hey, Tom Allman here, Motor City Spindle Repair. I want to tell you about how we use CAD and CAM in our process uh, here at Motor City Spindle Repair. But first I want to tell you about how I started out with CAD. Um, it was back in ninth grade in high school. I um, started drafting and it was a whole year of drafting. And then uh, 10th grade, was AutoCAD and Inventor and then 11th grade was Advanced AutoCAD and Inventor and then 12th grade I did Advanced 3D Modeling and then that carried over after high school I did a lot of prototyping for the automotive industry and now I'm here at Motor City Spindle Repair and we design a ton of parts in CAD and then goes to CAM to our machines and and these are parts just like this that that we can make here. So I'm used to being out in the shop uh, seeing what's going on hearing what's going on and um, I do have software that I can watch my machines with from my office but it's just not the same for me I, I like to uh, actually physically hear what's going on with them once the K100 got here, I purchased this toolbox and this stand for the computer. I just moved my CAD station out here. All right, in this segment, I'm going to show you some prints. I'm going to show you the parts. I'm going to flip through some CAD files and just explain to you what the parts are that we're making. The one you're looking at here is a Grosite cover. Um, this is for a box spindle. Um, this cover gets tore up and does not last the teardown process or being in the machine. So it's on a regular basis that we have to remanufacture these covers. Now here you see the the mill milling the back side of the cover after it was flipped around. And here's a smaller gross site cover. This cover is the same, same as the larger one. It gets tore up. We make these covers out of 4140 alloy or 8620. All right. Now here's the small gross site being machined out. Um, this is the, the first part of it. Then it gets flipped around. And now you're seeing the backside being done. Uh, these take about 20 minutes per side. Um, I've been getting the time down lately on them, though, with different cutters. Uh, here's our aluminum collar we make. This is a rear. Um, it's actually a cover, a, an aluminum rear cover. Um, these are... These usually don't last. They get they get tore up, and especially if a bearing gets spun, um, these are the first things to go. Now here you see um, this cover being roughed out in our Doosan, and then uh, it'll get parted off, and it has a few more processes after that. It goes to our mill. Um, here's an old one. Um, and there's a new one being made right now. This uh, brass nut, is, we make this on a regular basis. Um, this this goes in a, um, a Haas spindle. Now this is a steel gauge that I'm making right here for the nut. So I have a, a reference always. And uh, here's the print of it. Uh, this nut, it's a little complicated. It has a lot of little details to it. Um, but not too bad. About about 20 minutes to a half hour, we usually uh, can make one of these. Uh, here's, here's the OD being turned in our Doosan. Uh, I usually make about six, six to a dozen of these at a time. And, uh, yeah. and then it's going to
having the ability to make these parts is what keeps us on top of the game. If we had to buy these, um, it's kind of virtually impossible for us to buy them. But So the next best thing is to make it in my book. Here we got an aluminum drive collar. This goes on the back of a spindle to drive it. It gets tore up a lot, um, usually in the teardown process or in them taking it out of the machine um, to bring to us. It just doesn't last. And here we go in our Doosan again. It's being roughed out. And these collars, multi-step process. You got, you got turning in the Doosan right here. Gets parted off, and then it's off to our mill to get the balance holes put in it. And those, um, those bigger holes there that you see, those are, um, there's fingers that actually go in there, and that's what drives the spindle. And uh, we're roughing it out with a drill here, and then it gets uh, reamed out to a specific size. All right. Here we got our ID spindle that we made for our uh, Kellenberger 1500Us. It's a, um, we designed it all in-house, the whole entire ID spindle. Uh, this is just one of the parts to it. Um, here it is in our Doosan, getting roughed out, getting the OD finished, and then it's going to do a tool change and thread it. Um, this um, this was one of my favorite one of my favorite jobs here was building this building this ID spindle for our grinder. It, uh, I learned a lot and. Um, yeah, it was just fun building it. So that's about it for the ID spindle. And now we're on to our, we make these a lot. These are rear nuts that come in all different sizes, ranging 200 millimeters down to 30 to less. Um, it gets balance holes put in, in the face of it for balance, obviously, and... These are pretty easy to make. Um, I've gotten the threading process down pat on these. Um, I, I, I now I just machine them out, and then uh, and then I'll do the threading last. Um, it'll come in here, and it's gonna. You're gonna watch it do its uh, its ID threads. This video is a little, yeah, here we go. Here's a clear video of, of the threads being made. And now we're onto our surface grinder to top and bottom it. And that's a finished product for the ID nut or no, it's an OD nut. Now we're on to a little tricky little part. This is uh, to a high speed drill. Uh, this part has tons of detail in it, and it, um, but I was able to reverse it, um, and we've made quite a few of them already. Um, here's a print of it. This job, multiple machines as well. This gets, this goes from the lathe to the, to the mill. And then back to the lathe again. It's um, it's a fun little project, and I, I enjoyed uh, reversing it. Now here we got an aluminum cover. It's super thin. It was extremely difficult to make, um, but we were able to make it. 
out of out of some billet, a big chunk of billet, and I was able to keep the I was able to keep the warping to a minimum with the process I used. Um, and you can see there's just tons and tons of detail in this part. It goes on the face of a spindle. And uh, it got, the spindle was crashed. So there's basically not much of a cover left. Um, you'll see it in shortly here. This is this is me hogging out the underside of this piece of billet. And then uh, here's the cover itself. You can see all my writing on it from reverse engineering it. And that uh, that's that for that one. Now we're on to this aluminum block that it's actually an encoder bracket. And this encoder bracket is it holds an encoder that tells your spindle its orientation. Uh, very important. So this 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 little thing was uh, it has to be right on the money, or else. The encoder will not work right. Ah, welcome to my office. I am in, in here sometimes. Um, well, let me show you some parts. Um, I laid out all our, at least a couple dozen different parts we make. Um, here's a brass nut. This goes to a, uh, a Haas spindle. Here's our own ID spindle that we designed and made for our in uh, for our Kellenberger grinder. Um, here's a box spindle. This is a box spindle cover we make in-house. Another box spindle cover. Drive keys. This is um, the first step of drive keys. And then they'll end up like this. When it's uh, when they're ch you know, cut off and, and finished ground and everything. Um, some more drive keys in the first step process. Spacers. And here's my my CAD system here. Oh, here's a little aluminum part. This part's a little neat little part. It, um, it's for a high-speed drill. A lot of little details in it. But that, uh, I think that concludes our our video. Thanks for checking out my office and all my work. All right, now I want to show you where our parts end up on these spindles. So I, I put together, so I, I got a fully assembled spindle here. Um, this this one is needs to be tore down yet, and it's getting new bearings and getting reworked. But I just wanted to show you fully assembled out of the machine. And then here's the cartridge that you're seeing right here, and here's the spindle shaft that goes through the cartridge and the bearings. This is where the bearings ride, and there's a set of bearings up here, and then there's a set of bearings back here. Now, this is one of the parts that get tore up a lot. This is a, a rear cover. It's a cast aluminum cover. So we remake it out of billet aluminum. 4140 and you can see we we put the labyrinths back in it um, it has oil oil ports in it and so another part that we saw in the video was this aluminum collar uh, and this is what drives the spindle this will there, there'll be some fingers that go in here, and and that's what 
that's what actually turns the spindle and makes it go. Now here's the brass nut. Here's a, a tore up brass nut. Um, this brass nut goes inside this collar and what it does is it is it traps this this drawbar inside this inside this spindle. So this this drawbar is sitting in here like that. It's got gripper fingers on this end. That, that's what grips your tool. Now this brass nut will tighten down and it creates it creates force with all these washers. All these washers are shaped. Um, here, let me show you. All these washers are shaped with a little con, convex, convex, whatever you want to call it, um, and and it squishes, it, it flattens these washers out, which creates a whole stack of them like this creates a lot of force, a lot of a lot of drawbar pressure. So I just wanted to show you where these parts go, so you get a you'd be like, aha, oh, I get it. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank everybody that watched, and I want to invite you back to watch more of our videos with Practical Machinists and Motor City Spindle Repair. This is a real exciting series we're starting. Come on back and see us.